had so much fun working on your Mary Blair inspired castle with those geometric shapes. I love that lesson. I had so much fun making my own and I got to doodling and I got to thinking about these structures, these architectural forms that she makes out of these geometric shapes. And I um, just thought of an idea that we could kind of take this and base another art project on. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. So these are just kind of some doodles that I was working on whenever I um, was filming that Mary Blair lesson and thinking about architectural structures and just kind of, I just started doodling and all of a sudden my doodles kind of started reminding me of something. Y'all, they started reminding me of like these Christmas cards I've seen and I bet y'all have seen that have like kind of a cityscape of Bethlehem on them. See how those geometric shapes that we talked about are kind of combined to create these structures and create this cityscape that is a backdrop for like a nativity story. So that got me thinking and I got another idea. Let me show you where I went from there. Okay, this is where my brain goes. I know it's insane, but I was just trying to come up with a lesson about geometric shapes that y'all could do easily from your desks. And that spiraled into, I'm gonna paint a huge cityscape of Bethlehem in my driveway on a six foot by nine foot drop cloth. That's gonna be the backdrop for maybe a giant nativity scene that we can start working on when I get back. And um, I'm just really excited. And I wanted to show y'all this so that you could start thinking about how we're gonna paint this, how we're all gonna work together, how we're gonna create something super cool. And I'm so excited. I'm super inspired. Yay! Okay, so part two of this virtual lesson started with Mary Blair inspired artwork using geometric shapes and somehow morphed into, you know, um, <laughs> A city of Bethlehem backdrop for a nativity scene. So, you know, here we are. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we are looking at that same image that y'all made on your last um, lesson, the Mary Blair inspired castle, and adding like just some basic landscape elements with it. So when I say basic landscape elements, I mean um, okay, first of all, things that are closest to you, things in the foreground are going to be bigger than things in the background. So let's put a tree in the foreground. And I'm thinking about, you know, like trees in the Middle East, trees that would grow in Bethlehem. And so I'm kind of coming up with some palm trees. Those are going to be pretty big because they're going to be closest to us, right? We want to show space and depth by creating objects that are closest to us are gonna be the biggest. So there's a basic palm tree. Um, when I say basic landscape elements, I'm talking about super basic y'all, like basically you're just gonna make some hills. Um, we can talk about kind of the rule of threes with art and how when things are drawn in threes, it kind of creates balance. Um, and so it's most pleasing to the eye. So I have the big tree to show that this tree is close to us. And then I have three hills, basic landscape. And we're also going with the rule of three um, because it's pleasing to the eye to have three of something instead of two of something. Um, okay, so let's draw a little structure here, an architectural form. Think about those Mary Blair geometric shapes. And I'm going to draw it, you know, kind of big because the tree's the closest to us. But this is kind of in our middle ground. Foreground, middle ground, background, right? And so this is going to be kind of a big structure. And I'm going with geometric shapes still. Of 
square or rectangles. This is a rectangle, but with a semicircle on top of it. Let's do a semicircle here and maybe some little arched windows up there. Okay, so back here, this is way off in the distance, tucked up on that hill. So these, if we draw some buildings up here, let's make them a little bit smaller. Trees big because it's close to us. Buildings kind of big because it's in the middle. These are going to be little buildings back here. So we'll just kind of start. There's a rectangle with a little dome on top. Y'all, I am not super worried about um, making everything perfect, and I hope you aren't either. This is just kind of a way to get some ideas on your paper. Right now, we're just kind of sketching and brainstorming. Okay, I'm going to time lapse it. Here is my little Bethlehem background after I finished coloring it. And I wanted to show y'all how it looked with the um, color added and talk about what we've learned. First thing, geometric shapes. We're kind of building off of what we went over with our last lesson with Mary Blair, um, where we talked about using geometric shapes like, um, rectangles and semicircles, squares, circles, um, and triangles to create some architectural structures. And we're carrying that on over this lesson. So check for geometric shapes, cityscapes and landscapes. Okay. And art, whenever we have a, um, an artwork depicting buildings, a skyline, that's called a cityscape. And whenever we have an artwork depicting, you know, nature, something outside, trees and hills and land, that is called a landscape. And this is kind of a cityscape landscape hybrid that we worked on today. So check for that. Okay, we learned about the relationship between size and distance. Artists can show that something is closer by making it bigger, right? These trees are close. They're in the foreground, so they're big. And these buildings are far away. They're in the distance, so they're smaller. So, talked about the relationship between distance and size. That is a check. Rule of thirds. Okay, we touched on that a little bit. The rule of thirds is whenever your composition, your artwork is kind of divided into three sections. So we did that when we made three little hills. We also did that when we, we can also look at it this way. We can have like our foreground, our middle ground, and our background. The rule of thirds is whenever your eye just kind of naturally likes to look at things in groups of three. And we are applying that to our artwork. So check for that. Last thing let's talk about is craftsmanship. Craftsmanship, as you know, because we talk about it a lot in art, is just when you can tell that you as an artist are trying to be very neat, to take your time, to do your best, to make your work look the very best that it can be. And um, of course, I want you to practice good craftsmanship today in this lesson and in every lesson we do together. So we have learned so much in this lesson and in the last lesson. I am ready to see all the art that y'all are creating. I'm ready to create with you. I will see you soon.